So the iceberg is one of the key tools in systems thinking. The iceberg helps us see not only what is in front of us, before our eyes, that we can observe, but also what lies below the things that we may not be aware of or have access to. One key reason the iceberg is so helpful is because it reminds us to look not only at what we can see, but to dive a little deeper to try to understand why things are happening the way that they are. So the very top of the iceberg are going to be what we call events. Events are things that happen every day. Examples of events would be getting out of bed, going to work, catching a bus, going to the store, anything at all that we do is considered an event. Systems thinking tells us to be aware of patterns of events. So these are recurring events that happen over and over in some definable way that we can understand. Examples of patterns of events would be things like noticing that we oversleep every Friday or noticing that the bus runs late on Mondays, or noticing that the store doesn't have our items on Wednesdays. Relating this to the workplace, we could look for patterns such as who arrives early and who arrives late, who has accidents and when, what type of accidents occur most frequently, the time frames in which deadlines are most likely to be missed, and so forth. Patterns are significant in systems thinking because they tell us that something is going on in the system to create this pattern, to cause these same events to happen over and over. Sometimes patterns are beneficial and sometimes they are not, so it's important to understand why patterns occur. This allows us to replicate the good things in the system and address any issues in the system. One way to understand patterns is to use another systems thinking tool, which is behavior over time graphs. So we'll talk about those in another video. Events allow us to react to what's going on in the system, but it's important to note that we want to look for patterns because sometimes an event is just a one-off event. So there's no point in intervening in the system just to address what might very well be a fluke. So we want to look for patterns to make sure that when we intervene, we are addressing a systemic issue and not simply a one-time event. Understanding patterns also helps us be able to anticipate what might be about to happen based on past behaviors. but we don't want to stop at the pattern level. We want to look below the surface. And the next step below is structures. Structures are the scaffolding of the system, if you will. Structures can be formal structures, such as policies, procedures, rules, workflow, processes, or they can be informal those things that people do in the system, the workarounds, the shortcuts that let people get the job done. Understanding the underlying structures in a system is important because it is the structures that are enabling the patterns to exist. By understanding structures, we can intervene at a design level. By understanding how the system as it exists has been designed, and ways that we might alter the design to get the desired results. Underlying the structures are mental models. Mental models are the attitudes, biases, beliefs, and assumptions held by the people who designed the system in the first place. They are also the attitudes, biases, beliefs, and assumptions of the people who are working within the system and who have created the structures, both formal and informal, that have led to the patterns that we want to address. Working at the level of mental models allows us to make significant transformations, both in the people who are working in the system and in the system itself. What the iceberg tells us is always to be aware 
that whatever is going on in a system ultimately is rooted in the beliefs and values of the people working in the system. So now that we understand a little bit about the iceberg, let's use it in an example. An event could be that Sally was late to work on Tuesday. The pattern might be, we might remember that Sally was late last Tuesday. And this might be enough to cause us to look for a pattern in Sally's attendance. If we find that Sally's late every Tuesday, then we have a verified pattern that we might want to address. By doing some inquiry, we can surface the elements of the system or the structures that are allowing the pattern of Sally being late every Tuesday to exist in the system. For example, perhaps there's no attendance policy that provides any punishment for being late, period. Perhaps every Tuesday morning, the bosses meet, and so there's no one in the office to verify that Sally is late. We might also uncover that Sally's co-workers cover for her when she is late so that she won't get in trouble. And we can forget that Sally, too, lives within her own system. And so her life, being a system, will also have events, patterns, and underlying structures. So we might want to find out from Sally what's been going on in her life, what structures are enabling her being late every Tuesday. These could be things like transportation issues, child care issues, or some other issue that she hasn't yet addressed. Going below structures, we will get to the mental models. So this allows us to ask questions about why Sally is coming to work late and what her values are in making this decision. We can also look at the beliefs and values of the others in the system who are enabling her coming late every Tuesday. If we talk to Sally, we might find that she has an appointment at school every Tuesday morning with her son. She chooses to be late on Tuesday and to make this appointment at the school because she values the welfare of her child. And she values this welfare of her child above being late to work. We might also find that among Sally's colleagues who know what's going on, that they support this value as well and would rather cover her for her at the risk of violating policy than see her get in trouble. There could also be a belief in the system among Sally and her colleagues that if Sally were to bring this to her supervisor, that she would not be allowed to make these Tuesday morning meetings, or that there's something within the work culture that would prevent Sally from speaking up. So we can see how a pattern in a system, like being late to work, is supported by structures that enable this lateness, and that these structures in turn rest on mental models or beliefs and values of the people in the system who have created the structures that allow the pattern to exist. Had we stopped only at the pattern level and reprimanded Sally for being late all the time, we might have demoralized or even fired a very valuable employee. Using the iceberg to understand what's going on in the system and why allows us to make better decisions and to intervene in the system at the appropriate part and to make changes as needed. In other words, this iceberg is a valuable visual tool that reminds us to not accept what we see at face value, but to always dig a little deeper. Now it's your turn. Take a journal with you and note the patterns around you. These can be patterns in your work, in your personal life, at school, maybe even in the world, or in your community. Think about the structures that have to exist in order for that pattern to continue. And remember, these structures can be formal or informal. Then think about the beliefs and values in the system that support those structures that are allowing the patterns to continue. And remember that if you want to enact change in any kind of system, you have to change the way people think. You have to understand their mental models 
and you have to shift them to appropriate mental models that will bring about the results that you desire, which would be a change in the pattern. So go forth and enjoy this fun work and let me know how it works out for you.